I'm High Heel Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is a very special review of the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. Joining me for this review are my parents. My parents, please introduce yourself and say what you get you for the movie. I'm Professor Policy and I gave it an A-. minus. Hi, I'm Star Lantern and I gave it a B. And I gave the movie a D+. Plus. This movie is loosely based on the world famous ballet, The Nutcracker. The Nutcracker has always been special to us because our children have always danced in it when they were young. So we always look forward to the yearly production of The Nutcracker. The story is about a young girl named Clara. She recently lost her mother, so uh, herself her two siblings and her father go to uh, this Christmas party. It's their first Christmas party without uh, the mother. So the whole family is in some form of mourning. Now Clara, at the party, winds up finding her way into this magical fantasy realm. And in this fantasy realm, she learns that her mother was the queen of that realm, making Clara the princess. But the realm, or should I say the four uh, sections of the realm, four realms, are in turmoil. So it's up to Clara to bring peace among the four realms and unify the people. Now, as you can tell by our grades, uh, we all have some very uh, different opinions about this film. There's a lot of topics to cover, so there will be timestamps in the description area. You can just jump to whichever subject you want to jump to. Uh, with that in mind, we will uh, be bouncing from positive notes and negative notes. Usually in my reviews, I have a positive section and a negative section. But again, because there's so many various topics that uh, sort of work together, not work together, we're just going to go one by one by one by one by one until we reach our final verdicts at the end. Number one, tempo tip jobs. So the first topic of discussion is the music, because how can you have a production of The Nutcracker without talking about the music? And we all have various uh, thoughts about the musical uh, choices and use in the movie. Yes, I always enjoy the Nutcracker music. Like I said, our children are always in the Nutcracker, so I look forward to the Nutcracker each Christmas season. And so uh, in this movie, they played portions of the music, but they really didn't play an entire piece or they didn't play a long enough section of a piece. So that part I was disappointed in, but I uh, enjoyed the music that they did play. Uh, for me, the music in Nutcracker was like subtle, uh, like um, an afterthought or an echo to what was going on in the, in the movie. It was like, sometimes I said, hey, wasn't that, um, like it's one of the dances, but you only caught a hint of, of um, the music, and it was so subtle, so quiet, it was, uh, I, I almost missed it a lot of times. Uh, otherwise, the music was okay, but I missed a lot of the true meaning behind this, the music pieces that were in the, orig in the original Nutcracker Ballet. It was, it was like an afterthought in some cases, or... As if though you were dan um, going to uh, elevator music, something like elevator music, instead of being um, helping the plot along. And myself, uh, I sort of agree, um, not because I realized that uh, this was going to be a straight up, um, or more of a straight up narrative as opposed to a ballet or dance performance. I didn't mind so much that they only hinted at music or didn't do a full edition of music. But again, uh, that is a major point of, of selling, you know, it's like you go to a concert and you want that artist to sing a particular song that you love. And even though you've heard it a dozens of times, maybe hundreds of times, you want to hear that song. But when they get to the song, it's just a brief melody or maybe they sing like one stanza of it and you go, you know, the whole show might be terrible, but you, you miss out on those classic songs that you want to hear again for the thousandth time. Yeah, I can definitely understand why uh, the music on that front will be uh, disappointing. But as far as the sound and the interpretations of the pieces, it was a very solid overall. Yes. Yes. Number two, casting call of duty. Our next topic are, is the acting and the characters. 
and uh, would you like to start? Okay. I like that they use lesser known actors to play the main parts. I uh, was not familiar with the, the young man and the young young lady that played the parts of uh, uh, Clara and Captain Philip, yeah. and and that made it more open for me to continue to watching the movie. Um, so I did re recognize some of the characters like the uh, um, what's it, Ginger. Um, yeah, Mother uh, Mother Ginger. Mother Ginger, I recognize her character. I like the actress who played, I like that particular actress anyway, so that was okay. So, because you were halfway through the movie before you actually saw, I saw somebody that I, I recognized. And um, the fact that most of the characters were, were um, unknown actors to me, it made, it made it more uh, pleasant to watch. And you were just made uh, interested in seeing one particular performer. Right, I was interested in seeing Misty Copeland. <clears throat> I knew that um, she became famous as the first black principal ballerina, and I had always put it on my agenda to attend one of the um, ballet performances in which she performed, but I um, have not been able to do that so far. So I was happy to get this chance to see her in um, this movie, and so um, I was satisfied with that and very pleased with her performance. So the other performances were um, good and um, satisfactory to me because I really wasn't concentrating on that as much uh, as the reason for attending the movie. So um, they were um, adequate for my enjoyment. And I will say that I did like the acting overall, but I definitely uh, have problems with some of the characters or one of the things they did or not did. For instance, I knew this movie was going to be pretty much its own thing, but I was looking forward to seeing uh, the Nutcracker fight the Mouse King, and in this movie, the Mouse King is like sort of represented by this grouping of mice that have a sort of hive mind, and they can form themselves into larger creatures. So when I saw that, I was like, oh wow, this is going to be some of an epic thing that they're setting up. And while there is a very interesting uh, climax, I was disappointed that there wasn't an actual fight or battle or contest between the Nutcracker and the Mouse King. That, that was like the main thing I was looking forward to and I was very disappointed that it didn't happen. I was also all confused about some of the motivations of, of a couple of the characters and I won't uh, get into that now. I'm just saying that as far as acting goes, uh, excellent all the way across the board. And yes, as she mentioned, it is kind of nice to have a lot of lesser known actors uh, unlike say like the live action Beauty and the Beast where almost everybody is some type of Hollywood uh, name or celebrity. So yeah, it was nice to have just uh, give a couple of people that leg up an opportunity to uh, focus on the characters as opposed to how many uh, famous people they can put on the billboard. Mm -hmm. Number three, false positive prerogative. So the next topic is pretty much all on me because it's about the world building that this uh, production really lacks. And by world building, I mean the connecting tissue that helps you suspend your disbelief. Now, see, it's a fantasy production, and I understand that I got to suspend my disbelief. But the thing is, I like Paw Patrol. I like Power Rangers. I like Popeye. I like My Little Pony Friendships of Magic. So, it's not a case where I can't believe this. I just need certain connecting tissue. For instance, uh, let's take the flux capacitor. I don't know how the flux capacitor works, but I know Doc Brown spent 30 years studying uh, temporal mechanics. I know that he needs a... Uh, a nuclear reaction to create the 1.21 gigawatts of power to send the time machine into the uh, different time zone. And I know that you know there's time circuits like that. I know enough to connect the tissue of how this works. But in this universe, we're introduced to the idea that this ordinary housewife, when she was a little girl, somehow made a machine that creates artificial life, not with magic, but with some science. And I'm like, how does that work? Or even some of the, as the mice, they were so confusing. Like, uh, I was confused by how the mice work, and you were confused by how the mice work, right? Oh, yeah. I was very confused. Because um, I couldn't figure out if the, the mouse that had the key was the king uh, was the king mouse, or was that when they gathered up, were they going to change to a big, a big mouse or a big rat? And uh, when they turned into um, going through the forest, fighting the soldiers and all that, it was very confusing. Yeah. 
And uh, even in the ballet, which we're going to be talking about the next subject, has problems with the world building, which tries to explain things, and yet you're just left with more questions. So I was just like struggling through much of this production, going like, I don't understand this, I don't explain. Even if you're going to do a cop-out and say, you know, like in Austin Powers, where they just directly say to the audience, you know, hey, don't worry about this, just try to enjoy yourself. Or in Tomorrowland, where you say, Hey, can't you just enjoy the fantastic? Sometimes it's just you be, you know, wonderful, even though there's a spaceship underneath the Eiffel Tower. Just enjoy yourself. You know, I need something connected to you. So I struggle with that. There are parts that she struggled with, but you didn't have any struggle with that kind of thing, were you? No, I didn't have any struggle with that. <clears throat> I um, wasn't looking for that expertise. I was just sitting back and enjoying the um, experience, really. That's the music. Um, the um, theme of the story, um, the um, sort of fantasy-like um, appearance of the story, um, the colors, the m music, the dancing. So like a more of, um, like a holiday spirit rather than some deep um, emotional <laughs> <laughs> um, um, thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number four, ballet point of order. Now our next topic is the ballet uh, part of the story. Even though the whole film is in the ballet, there is a part where uh, Clara goes to this amphitheater with the other regents of the uh, realms and watches a ballet which explains the history of uh, the Magic Realm and the Four Kingdoms. And of course, that ballet starred Misty, so I'll let you uh, start this topic since it's about Misty. Yes, I was happy to um, finally see her in sort of like a featured performance. And um, she did um, just about a complete um, ballet performance, which I uh, was happy with. I did kind of get confused as to whether the um, characters were looking at the performance or then they turned away and then it came back to the performance. But I, as I said before, I really wasn't trying to follow the story that closely. I was just there to enjoy the ballet of Misty Copeland, which I did. And uh, you had a similar issue with uh, the cutaways, but before we uh, fall into that, you also had an issue with the male dancer, well, one of the uh, lead male dancers that joined Misty for part of the performance. Yes, I had a big issue. Um, it, it was, her, her, her dancing was beautiful, and then this man in half-naked mirror, <laughs> with just, what was the tights? Yes, just wearing, tights. Wearing just, <laughs> just wearing white tights. I know this is a form of a dress for a male dancer, but I kept asking myself, is this supposed to be a uh, children's movie? You know, um, children's probably watching this? I think it would have been more appropriate if he had had on some kind of nice white Long sleeve top with uh, shimmering, um, shimmering, or even um, to make him look more either like a soldier or even um, 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 a character, a character, a, character. A, a character, a character, look more like a character. By him being dressed that way, it it took me completely out of the movie. It, it put me right into the theater. I did not feel like I was in the movie. I was in the I was sitting in the, in the theater. Um, watching the ballet on stage. Then it cut back to the movie and then it like, it's like, oh yeah, oh, it's like we're all watching the movie. Then as we get back selling to the movie, it cuts back to the ballet. And even though he was magnificent in his dancing, she was magnificent in her beauty, uh, her dancing, the fact that he just had on the, on the, the tights and uh, his chest was bare and it's supposed to be a, a movie for children, it's great for the children to see this, that a man can be a, um, a graceful dancer too. But I think since my children have been in Nutcracker so many times, I've seen how the man was dressed with a nice top. And, and I think if they had a nice top, he had, had on a nice top, it would have enhanced her, her dancing even more. Because it, it made him look more like it was a, a, they were a, a couple or a team dancing this beautiful piece of music. And along with that, uh, I sort of agree that it's something should have been covered because it's not a case of it's any sexually or raunchy, just like that. But the uh, Misty's character is supposed to be the queen who was Clara's mother. She, that's what she represents. 
So we're going through the story where she's uh, going through the lands, and also she has this partner who is very good looking and very you know well built as a dancer should be. But I'm wondering, okay, is this uh, someone she dated, or is this just a guy dancing with her? Because you know he's just. He's, he's, he's a pretty nice torso, so I, that just distracted me about trying to understand what is going on. And again, with the cutting back and forth, uh, that's another problem with the world building. You know, I, you're watching this ballet, and you're trying to follow up the history of the realms, and then it cuts to seeing Clara being driven in the sn uh, snow with the sleigh ride to the various other realms, but it cuts back to the ballet, and I'm thinking, wait, did she actually go to that? Because there's no point in the story where she actually goes on that trip around the realms. So did she imagine that as the ballet was performing, or did they just film scenes of her riding through the uh, other realms, and they had to cut it, the, fil the runtime, so they just stuck it into the ballet? I was confused, she was confused, he wasn't as confused because he was just happy to see this. <laughs> but still, there was a little bit of confusion. So, yeah, it's like a, the ballet part of it was wonderful. We just would have nice could have stuck with the ballet mm -hmm. and, you know, give the full costume to everybody. I mean, even the mice. I didn't understand how the, how the, the there's there's toy mice, but there's real mice. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. So, yeah, the ballet, the ballet was nice, but try to work it into the story, into the movie was uh, a bit confusing. Number five, photo shoplifting. Now, piggybacking on what we discussed in the, about the ballet, about the cuts, we have to talk about the editing and the cinematography. The editing in this movie is very confusing. There are scenes that's just sort of jump cut to, to the next one. For instance, there's this moment where uh, Clara is going to be doing this stunt with a rope, and you see her uh, take down the chandelier. Now, normally, we, after take down the chandelier, the character say, okay, here's the plan, or follow me, or this way, or what are you going to do? You know, it's like maybe two or three seconds to transition you into the next spot, but no, it doesn't. The chandelier comes down, and the next thing you see are two of the regents walking out to a, a window, looking outside, and Clara's running outside, and it's like, oh, this, when did this happen? You know, it, it's just jumping back forth. So, you know, there's jumping in the ballet, there's jumping in, throughout the whole movie, and so it's just really confusing. And even when they're not... <laughs> Uh, jump cutting or, or poorly transition, uh, you had issue with just the cinematography itself. Uh, you, uh, there wasn't quite to your taste. Right. Um, it sort of had this uh, live action and um, cartoon mess. So it wasn't quite live action, it wasn't quite cartoon. Um, which, for my taste, I, I um, don't enjoy that. But um, I understood and I understand that they're doing that now and so um, I understood it so I accepted it but like if I was the one making the movie I would not have done that but it didn't um, distract from my enjoyment of the motion picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now you were pretty comfortable with the uh, cinematography but again like with the transitions you could have right. messed them up with. Right. It, 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 it was a little confusing, and some scenes look like like several people are here. This is my take on it. Here's my part to the movie. Here's my part, and they just put them all together, and it was like, you know, like blotches. Like this is my slot. Like he had put, done a part, and you had done a part. I had done a part, and we put all the parts together. And if, if it didn't look too hard, you wouldn't see that there's no transition between yeah, between the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh those those handful of seconds make all the difference. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Probably two or three or five seconds, but still, they make a big difference. <laughs> Number six, much a don't about everything. Another topic is the, uh, not the climax, but sort of the aftermath of the climax. Uh, in the story after uh, Clara defeats the villain, uh, you know, the remaining readers wish her well and she goes off to back to home uh, but there doesn't seem to be a real mass celebration I, there was a hint of it but that would have been a great time to really play up the four realms and have a little grander finale and that was uh, your topic your main issue with the uh, part of the film yes um, even even though it was very great very good I think I would have wanted to have seen more of the the, the different characters. I would like to have seen the, the um, 
the dances. Um, I would like to have seen the, the Spanish dance. I'd like to see, have seen the Chinese dance. In some, in some way, to make it more, at the end was one place where they could have put it, as a celebration that they're all free, and each one was, was doing their particular dance. Even they have in, in a section, like the, the Chinese are here, the, the Spanish dance were here, um, the Egyptian dance were here, something um, to show that, show these dances that were part, are part of the Nutcracker. And I miss not seeing those characters even for a brief second in, a, in, in a, the movie. In a celebration at the end, representing that they're free and each realm is, is dancing or whatever, um, would have been a nice um, ending, a, I think a better ending. It still would have been nice if they had shown it on the flowers dance, even, even the snowflake dancers, you know, even, even just as her, as she was leaving, even she was leaving, going back to her, they were saying goodbye to her, they could have been doing their dances as she um, moved in the sled or whatever, walking toward, waving goodbye. I just need, I just wanted to see some of the, the um, dances in the second scene of the Nutcracker mm -hmm. in the movie. And you didn't have uh, any opinion of that beforehand, but having uh, discussed this prior to recording, do you uh, feel similar? Do you think there should have been a little more celebration or a little more of the risking of the realms? <coughs> Or you're just like, hey, it's cool. <laughs> well, um, like I said, I like the um, ballet, so sure, I would have appreciated a little more of the uh, dancing. And, um, I would have appreciated more scenes of the different um, characters, say like the Russian dance, um, Snowflake, um, the circus. So, um, yeah, I would have liked that. Um, but, I mean, it didn't happen, um, so I'm not going to criticize the movie because of that. Number seven, family tree trimming. So, The Nutcracker in the Four Realms is obviously a family movie, family oriented movie, so of course it's supported to leave some type of moral lessons, or a few moral lessons if you can. So, there was a moral lesson that uh, they taught very well, and there was a moral lesson that they taught poorly, along with a couple other morals that they tried to do. Now, one thing I took issue with the moral lesson is that, on the one hand, Clara is supposed to be no longer selfish, you know, thinking about the feelings of her father. Initially, she doesn't want to dance with her father, but at the end, she comes to realize how much he's hurting and uh, uh, understands that, you know, sharing a dance is a way of um, helping him move on and accept the things like that. So, on the one hand, she does share the dance, but on the other hand, she's keeping the ultimate secret about their family from her siblings and her father. I mean, there's no reason why she shouldn't be telling her siblings, hey, mom is from this crazy magic realm. You gotta come see this. You're not gonna believe this. I mean, like, if, if that happened to me, I would, as soon as I would, I would be calling on all my siblings, hey, you won't believe what she was doing was somehow behind her. When she was, like, being at the school or doing teacher work and things like that, she was doing this fantasy realm where she invented a machine that can bring inanimate objects to life. You got to tell them about that. No, she's apparently just going to leave that totally to herself. I mean, even uh, the Godfather has a nerve. See, it's something that annoys me so much how... Uh, he said, you know, of all of your, uh, all of your, all this you she's invented, you were her greatest invention, which means, I guess, you know, the, the big sister and little brother are nothing. And the big sister and little brother, they're nice kids. And they're suffering, too. You know, there's a scene where uh, the boy's like, well, who's going to dance with me? Like, the dad wants to dance with both daughters, but the boy asked, well, who's going to dance with me? It's his first family, it's his first experience without uh, Christmas without his mom. He's probably thinking, I'm always going to dance with mom at one sometime, and now that's not going to happen. But it's for a play for a chuckle. So yeah, I was really, really frustrated that this, you know, nice girl who's no longer selfish and is really to, you know, reconnect with her family is going to just keep this super ultimate world shadowing secret all to herself. I was just really frustrated about it. So I was upset about that, but there was a great uh, lesson taught in... You can go into that subject. <laughs> I'm, I'm just uh, every time they uh, so yeah, let's get some positivity. Uh, well, when I had time to think on the on the movie, I I realized certain factors um, subtly were being taught, and um, if you if you think you have to think on the movie, um, I found I realized that in the beginning of the movie, Claire 
um, trapped mice. She that was their way of trying to get, um, um, I guess, keep mice under control or just get help get rid of the mice. So she had a thing against mice. When the, she went to the magic world, uh, Captain Philip also had a problem with mice, and the mouse had a problem with Captain Philip and and uh, Clara. Everybody had a problem getting along. But by, but as the movie went along, Clara and Captain Phillips started began to trust, and the mouse, uh, with the key, began to trust and work together. And by the very end of the movie, they completely trusted each other. So I think the subtle moral lesson is that you can learn to become friends with someone or something you don't like or don't like to do, and you can set aside differences and work together for a greater good and at the very end you can just learn to like each other period and when he gave that mouse a kiss <laughs> that was it <laughs> but, but it was just like putting the period I think at the end of learning to like something or someone you, you did not like in the beginning you can learn to love each other and uh, any particular lessons or morals you liked, or was it all about the? Was it all about Misty? Yeah, yeah it's all about Misty. <laughs> it's all about Misty. That's fine. That's, that's totally fine. He was there for Misty. I'm just, okay. Look, I knew Catwoman was going to be a terrible movie, but I wanted to see Halle Berry running around in black leather. I got to see Halle Berry running around in black leather. So yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Number eight, Generation Excellent. So our last topic of discussion is that despite how we have very various and different feelings about the movie, it is a nice, solid, wholesome film that you can enjoy with just about anyone in family or friends. That I enjoyed that part, that it's a nice, wholesome movie that um, you can take anybody to see. I'm thinking about taking our grandchildren to see it. And... Um, <clears throat> That part I was really um, happy about, it. but I mean, it's a Disney film, so um, you would um, expect that a Disney film would be a wholesome family film, which it was, and I'm very happy about that. Yes, it was a very nice family film, but um, to make it more more enjoyable, do not see any Nutcracker ballets before seeing it. Because the concept is is very like like we said in the beginning, is very loosely based on the Nutcracker Ballet. But if you go there and uh, if you have seen it a few times, just put it on the shelf and enjoy what you see, because you you will only see excerpts from the actual ballet. But you'll see a lot of fantasy. You'll see a lot of creativity, and um, it's and, and warn the kids about the mice. <laughs> Warn them about the mice so they don't go screaming in the theater, in the movie house, and you know, interrupting the movie. But basically, it's a very, very nice film. Yes, it is a very nice film. There's no um, a major uh, potty humor. There's no uh, foul language. Uh, there's no one lubricating on anyone. You know, it's it's a very solid film from beginning to, to end. Uh, so on that front, yeah, nothing to complain about that. Sometimes mm -hmm. he's a uh, PG or even some G uh, movies try to sneak in something that's just for the adults, but no, this is totally uh, clean from top to bottom. So that front, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I gave the film an A minus because um, I went there for um, like a relaxing, enjoying experience, which I did. I didn't go to see the film as some. Um, deep philosophical um, treatise or some uh, metaph metaphysical um, expose. So what I went to see the film for, I was satisfied for what I did see and um, I enjoyed it and um, I recommend it for people who uh, similarly want to see a film just to enjoy and not to um, get some sort of um, deep philosophical meaning from <clears throat> I gave the movie a B because I kept flashing back to the all different ballets I had seen of the Nutcracker over the years 
on TV and with my children, our children being in it. So I couldn't grasp some of the concepts in this mo in this movie because of that. Otherwise, it was a great movie. And myself, I gave it a D plus because even though it's a fantasy, I don't subscribe to the idea that well, it's just for kids that it can be uh, flippant with this world building. So whether it's Star Wars or Star Trek or Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer, I need the connecting tissue. I need to enjoy the characters. I need to be uh, invested in whatever lore you're trying to set up. So yes, it does look great and the music is great, but if you try to think or follow what is happening with the bad editing and the confusing characters, it, it, it just falls apart. So yes, very nice to watch and look at and listen to, but I was very disappointed and confused and frustrated. So that's why the movie gets a D plus for me, a minus for me, and a B from me. Okay, that's our review of The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. Thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And of course, I want to extend a very special thank you to my fans for joining me for this review. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. And with that said, I'm Professor Policy. I'm Star Lantern. And I'm High Heel Knight. Remember, find inspiration every